Hey everyone, welcome back to A Lab Lessons Online. Okay, I'm gonna be moving on to question five of your 2017 A Level uh, H2 Math Paper One question. I mean, in this case, we're looking at question five. All right. So for this question, it is going to be on your system of linear equations as well as looking at a bit of differentiation. Okay, this question, I mean this paper so far, we have already seen a lot, a lot of differentiation. This question is no different, okay, part two, we're going to be looking at differentiation. Okay, for part one, it is a very classic, a very, very classic A-level question that um, usually comes out and it's very, very simple to do, okay? It's just the u- using of your of your graphic calculator. So the first part, it, when we look at it, okay, it says when the polynomial x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c is divided by x minus 1, x minus 2, and x minus 3. The remainders are 8, 12, and 25 respectively. All right, so for this question, it's actually very, very simple. All you're going to do is you have x minus 1, x minus 2, x minus 3. Okay, essentially, this basically means that these values lie on the curve. Okay, so you're going to have x equals to 1, x equals to 2, and x equals to 3. All you need to do is just sub x to become this for your polynomial. Okay, so let's say our polynomial, we let it be, um, since fx is used in the second part, we use gx. So let gx equals to x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, all you're going to do now is you're just going to want to sub in these values of x. So g1 will equals to 1 plus a plus b plus c. And this value would be equivalent to your remainder, which is 8. So this would equal to 8. Okay, then you're going to use g when x equals to 2. You will get 2 cubed, which is going to be 8, plus 4x. Oh, sorry, not 4x squared. My bad, 4a plus 4a plus 2b, plus c. And this whole thing will be equivalent to 12. Okay, lastly, you're going to use g x equals to 3. So you have 3 cubed, which is 27, plus 9a, plus 3b, plus c, will give you a 25. Okay, as seen from the question above, all right? Uh, so now all you need to do is just bring all the, the numbers to one side you will get from the first equation, you get a plus b plus c equals to 7. On the second equation, you get 4a plus 2b plus c equals to 12 minus 8, 4. And lastly, all you will get is 9a plus 3b plus c equals to negative 2. All right, so this is equation 1. This is equation 2. This is equation 3. All you need to do now is very simply just to put this all into the GC. Okay, so you can just write using your graphic calculator. You just key this in, okay, into your system of equations. You will find that your answer, you will get A equals to minus 3 over 2. In your calculator, it will show X, Y, and Z. So whatever your X, Y, and Z, you have to follow the order. So in this case, because we are going with A as your X, B as your Y, and C as your Z, just start. The, the x and a x to become a y to become b and z to become c so you get b equals to 3 over 2 and lastly c will be equivalent to 7 so this is your answer so the first part they ask you to just find the values of a b and c that is your answer for marks given very very simple all right part two okay part two asks you okay a curve has equation y equals to fx where fx equals to this, x cubed plus x squared plus bx plus c. Same as the front, okay? Always notice, okay, they always link. Part 1, part 2, part 3 always links. Okay, they have the same uh, equation here. Okay, with the values a, b, and c found in part 1. So that means we're just going to use the values that we found before. So show that the gradient of the curve is always positive. Hence, explain why the equation fx equals to 0 has only one real root. And find this root. Okay, so you're going to be finding the x value. That is what they mean by finding that one um, uh, real root, okay? So for this part, they ask you, okay, show that the gradient is always positive. So let's just sub in our values first that we have gotten from part one. So your fx in this case, we will have x cubed 
minus 3 over 2x square plus your b which is 3 over 2x plus c 7 so this is the equation so what you're going to do now is every time you're going to find um in this case they are asking to show the gradient every time you want to find gradient and you have a fx or i mean in this case it will be if you start your fx to become y it's basically y equals to x cubed plus da 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 da, da. then all you're going to all you're going to need to do is just do your your normal differentiation it's very very simple so every time they ask you to find um gradient or stationary point always look to dy dx so in this case we don't have a y here so we're just going to use f prime x instead so f prime x would equals to 3x square 3 over 2 times 2 you just get minus 3x and then 3 over 2x you just differentiate that you get 1 so it's 1 times 3 over 2 you just get plus 3 over 2 so this would be our f prime x so now they are going to ask you okay find whether this is what is it uh, it's always positive so in order to do that okay there's only one method we can use over here which is completing the square Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to complete the square and then that will be able to help you um, to determine whether your gradient is going to be negative or whether it's going to be positive. Alright, we'll see how, how we get that later on. Okay, first thing whenever you are doing completing the square is always make sure that your coefficient of x square is always 1. So there shouldn't be a 3 in front. So let's just take out the 3 real quick. So you get 3 x square minus x plus half. Okay, this happens when you take out the 3. Now you can just do your normal completing the square inside the brackets. Leaving your 3 outside, you will have 3 bracket x square minus x. Uh, usually what we always do is we follow the, the sign before. Okay, so you will always plus minus half square plus half. And then you have to get rid of that part that you just completed the square minus half square like this so after this all you need to do is just combine very simply combine it combine the square values you got x square here you got minus half square you just combine it x minus half whole thing square plus half minus bracket minus half square uh, half square you just get one quarter like this so you get three bracket x minus half square plus one quarter that is all you will get Alright, after this, you just need to simply bring the 3 back inside. You will just get 3 bracket x minus half square plus 3 quarter. So this is currently where we have stopped at for completing the square. This is roughly where our answer is going to be at. Okay. So now that you have done this part, okay, then you should be able to find, okay, since this basically essentially means that your gradient, which is f prime x, is equivalent to 3 bracket x minus half square plus 3 over 4. So from here you can conclude, right, that this answer, if you realize, is always going to be more than 0. Why? Because when you have got something that's inside a square, x minus half, no matter what the x value if, is, even if it's a negative 1000, okay, the whole answer over here, this whole part, sorry, let me just use a highlighter. This whole part will always be more than zero. You're going to add a three quarter after that. So definitely your answer will always be more than zero. So you can already conclude that therefore, since f prime x, which is equivalent to three bracket x minus half square plus three over four is more than zero, it's going to be always be more than zero for, okay, always remember all real values of x comma the gradient is always positive so this would be your answer what the question was looking for All right so this is the reason why your gradient is always positive is because uh, x minus half square is really going to be positive you add a three quarter it will just be even more positive all right so after this then the next part of the question they ask hence explain why the equation fx equals zero has only one real root and find this root all right so um this part the reason why is very simply because um of this gradient okay so this gradient itself already shows you that it's always positive okay so that means that the gradient that fx okay that means um essentially it can be deduced that this function is always going to be strictly increasing if not how can a gradient be positive correct so in that case what happens is that if the graph okay of y goes to fx cuts the line of your axis your y and x axis at only one point it will basically imply that it only has one real root all right so for this part the answer you're just gonna write 
Therefore, fx is strictly increasing. So the graph of fx can cut y equals to 0, your axis, at only one point. If you want, you can try and um, plot this out in your, on your graphic calculator. You'll see that um, it is a strictly increasing function. Okay, so this, so therefore, fx, uh, as in this is when fx equals to 0, okay? We'll only have one real root. One real root. All right, so when fx equals to 0, what happens is that it means that your entire equation equals to 0. So you only cut, okay, at one point, and it shows that fx is strictly increasing. All right, so quite simple, this part. Okay, part 3. All right, part 3 asks you, uh, find the x-coordinate of the points where the tangent to the curve is parallel to the line y equals to 2x minus 3. Okay, every, every time you, hear, you see the word parallel, okay, instantly you know what your gradient is going to be. So you're going to basically um, realize that for this part, oh sorry, wait, actually part 2, we haven't finished this part. Okay, find this root. Okay, let's find it first. So in order to find this root, it's very simple. You just need to sub your fx equals to 0. So once you sub fx equals to 0, which is the entire equation, you are able to find the root already. So your equation is up there. So you just say let fx equals to 0. Your equation is x cubed minus 3 over 2x squared plus 3 over 2x plus 7 equals to 0. So you just need to use your GC. So using GC, you'll find that x equals to negative 1.3299, which should be equivalent to negative 1.33. So this is your answer for your x value. So this is the only real root that will exist when fx equals to 0. Alright, so part three, moving on to part three, the very, very last part is the very it's a very simple part. Okay, when it when it says that it's parallel to the graph of y equals to 2x plus minus 3, okay, you will know that your gradient is equal to 2. Okay, it means that the tangent is is the same gradient. So the gradient you've already found in your first part, which is f prime x. So you're just gonna take f prime x equated to become 2. So you will have your equation, which is 3x minus half square plus 3 over 4 equals to 2. You just need to do simple math. Bring all the numbers to one side, divide it by all, divide all by 3. You get x minus 1 over 2 square equals to 5 over 12. From here, just use your GC. You can just expand or you can just square root the other side. You'll get x minus half equals to plus minus 5 over 12. And then you just need to, um, the answers, you don't have to worry about whether you leave it in a uh, fraction form or not. You can just leave it in decimals. So the x coordinates will be equals to half plus minus root 5 over 12. If you want to give it in decimal points, you'll have x equals to negative 0 0.145 and x equals to 1.15. So these will be your answers for the x coordinates when the tangent is parallel. So every time you see that the thing whereby tangent is parallel, okay, it means that um, the gradient is going to be the same. Okay, if it's perpendicular, then it will be the gradient equals to negative one. So this is your common um, graphing and a bit of uh, your 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 curves knowledge. Okay, you need to understand all this. All right, so actually that's all for this question. Okay, it's not a very hard question to do. I would say that out of the first five questions, it is the more challenging one, but you should be able to get the free marks, which is in your question, your, your part one and your part three. All right, so part two, just make sure that you're very careful. Um, and you just make sure that once you see this kind of question, you understand that fx equals to zero and that the function is going to be strictly increasing as a result of the gradient that you found. Okay, so if you did enjoy this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out a lot. Um, I'll go through the next question, question six very soon. And do subscribe if you are interested in getting the, the, the latest videos out there as well. All right, so if not, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.